Hello, this is Dave Christensen coming to you today from Home and the Garden 911.com. Today I'm going to show you how to properly terminate a duplex receptacle device onto this wiring coming out of this box. In previous videos, I showed you a couple of the finer points of uh, differences between receptacle devices and uh, how to uh, strip the wire and wrap it around the post and tighten it down. Today, I want to show you how to actually install one in the box. So I'm going to rearrange myself so I can um, sit up and do the work. You won't be able to see my face probably, but that actually my face is probably the least important part, isn't it? Of course it is. Uh, I took this apart. Actually, this is an older uh, outlet. I took it apart and straightened out the wires so I could show you how to put it back on and bend the hook. I've already stripped the wire uh, insulation off of here, but uh, I will repeat something that I said before. On the back of the uh, receptacle device, molded right into the plastic is a strip gauge. It tells you how much insulation to strip off for proper termination. So you can do that, you should actually use that for a reference. Once you've done this a few times, you can uh, pretty much just estimate it and uh, you'll be fine. So you take your uh, strip tool. The other thing is when you're stripping the wire, use the right size hole in this. This is uh, designed to strip insulation off different sizes of wire. So. Uh, know, you need to know the size wire you're stripping. This happens to be 14 gauge. If you choose uh, the wrong size uh, stripper, uh, what you might do is nick the wire. And if you do that, after the wire is bent a couple times, that's likely where it's going to break. And you, you don't want it to break on you. So it's best to head that off by using the right stripper. Fashion a little hook on this wire. Using the holes, there's holes made for that. See that hole right there? And another one right here that's made for just that purpose. Just to fashion a little hook on there. And we'll do the bare copper grounding conductor here. Now, uh, I guess we'll do the uh, grounding conductor first. That goes on the green post. That's your ground. It's bonded with the metal frame of the uh, receptacle device. One of my captive screws just fell out. So you hook that on there so the wire is wrapped around that post in a clockwise direction because of course that's the way the screw turns to tighten it down. So if you didn't have that right you would actually spread the hook too wide. You can use this tool as also to uh, close that hook up a little bit around the post, which is desirable. Tighten that up nice and snug. You don't want to kill yourself on it, but you don't want it to come loose either. We call it snug tight. Now that's a nice tight hook around that post. There's the brass colored screw. The, uh, the black wire goes on there. And uh, we can try to tighten that down a little bit. Now, you need to, after you've uh, done one of these terminations, you need to inspect it closely because if you didn't have the, uh, if you had too much insulation stripped off, what you would end up with is too much bare copper hanging off the back side of this thing. You don't want that. You want just enough stripped off so you got bare copper underneath that screw and you got insulation everywhere else. If you didn't have enough insulation stripped off of there, what you might end up having is some insulation underneath the screw. And that's another inspection point you want to uh, look for 
you don't want you want to make sure that there's nothing but bare copper under that screw if you have insulation under that screw you don't have a good connection you have to redo that make sure that wire is wrapped nice and tight around that screw and uh, you'll be fine okay now the silver screw on the other side is where the neutral wire goes I'm gonna close that hook a little bit too on this one and we'll tighten it down looks good from here no extra copper hanging out no insulation under the screw now when you're running your Romex wiring, your house wiring, when you run it into the box and it comes time to snip off the excess, if there is any, uh, you want to always leave at least six inches hanging out of the box. You, you need enough wire in case it breaks or if for some reason you uh, have to redo this and have to trim the wire again. You need enough wire to work with. You don't want to have it so short that you're trying to work up here up inside the box. It just doesn't work. It makes no sense to cut it too short. Leave an extra length. Uh, six inches at least. Because you got you do have room to fold it back in there. Now I, I realize that there's some instances where you have two pieces of Romex. If you got another receptacle down the line, this happens to be the last one on the, on the end of the line of the circuit branch circuit. Uh, if you had another one coming going down the line, you'd have your Romex coming in to feed it. You'd have another one tying on to the other screw. That's what that's for. And that would be going somewhere else. Uh, so that, you know, then, then you start to get a little bit of a crowded box. But still, there's no excuse for cutting the wire too short. You need to have at least six inches out. There's room. To, there's room. There's room to fold that back in there, kind of like a, an accordion. Fold it up kind of like an accordion in there so it doesn't get pinched. You want to make sure this fold it back in there nice and neatly so it doesn't get pinched when you, uh, when you tighten this, when you uh, screw this thing back into the box. I'm going to show you another, uh, I'm going to show you the trim plate in a second. Now these holes, mounting holes, these screw holes are slotted. So you can move this left and right. So you can get this so it looks just right, straight up and down, plumb. Sometimes the box, when you cut the box in, it doesn't end up so it's exactly plumb. So you have this gives you a little bit of an extra adjustment on it. I can't see it exactly where I'm sitting right now, whether it is plumb or not, but if it's not, I'll fix it later. You got my word on that. If you don't believe me, my wife, she'll spot it. Tighten that little screw there. Now when you're done, here's a little finer point among us electricians. When you're done, that slot on that screw should be exactly horizontal, left and right. Or you could go vertical, plumb up and down. You can call me anal if you want to, uh, but a trained electrician will do that. And honestly, no one but a trained electrician would even notice that. So there you go. Uh, again, this is Dave Christensen at uh, homeandgarden911.com. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to bring this to you today. My hope is that it will be uh, some useful information for someone, and I'm hoping that it is. Uh, our, our website, homeandgarden911.com, has all kinds of uh, categories on there for home maintenance, home repairs, uh, home re uh home renovation, how-to topics, all kinds of stuff. Visit that if you would. And if there's anything there that you have a question on, please leave me a message. Leave me a comment. Or if there's something you'd like to know about that you don't find there, uh, leave that to, uh, for me in a form of a question. If, the, if it's something that I have uh, any perspective on, I'd be more than happy to address that. Again, it's Dave Christensen at homeandgarden911.com. If you think this is uh, somewhat useful, please uh, hit the like button on your YouTube. I appreciate it. You have a great day.